So here's a, an emulation of how the strange spirals might have formed. Imagine an orbiting piece of space junk in a discarded stage. It's chucking out some sort of fuel out the back and out the side. This gets it spinning, and as it spins, this turns the ejector into a large spiral viewed from above here and from in front. If you cut to a third person perspective, you get to see this spiral growing in the sky as this thing moves through the sky. Stuff being left out the back leaves the spiralling blue trace, stuff throwing out the side leaves the spiralling white trace. And then when it runs out, when it stops, you get this large black disc that appears to grow from the middle outwards. So it looks beautiful, but probably a fairly ordinary explanation.
So it's been a little while since I've made a video. I've been kind of putting this off. I don't know why, but I thought I'd um, make sure everybody knew about something called Tequila Sunrise. Now this completely explains what happened on December 9th with the Norway Spiral. It completely explains the whole scenario, and uh, a lot of people already, you know, had an assumption that it was probably um, something from the harp that the Ace Cat facility that's in Norway, and they don't. I mean, it, it could have been a missile that launched the payload up into the atmosphere, but people don't really have, you know, people have a hard time buying that it was just a rocket. So, um, somebody on AboveTopSecret.com found this, and this is actually on the AceCat.se website, it's their official website. Now, according to this, on December 9th, 2009, the day of the, the Norway Spiral, Scheduled for 7 to 10 o'clock a.m., the exact time of the Norway Spiral, they scheduled a test at the SCAT facility, um, and it's called Tequila Sunrise. It says the transient effects quantification under ion ionospheric low-angle sunrise. The idea is to look for the polar wintertime mesospheres through the transient caused by the scattered sunrise at about 8. AM, exactly the time of the Norway spiral. Interestingly, this happens to be the maximum occurrence time of the polar mesosphere window echoes. So they say that it's the, the time that the radiation's in the atmosphere and it can light up and that's what they're trying to test by heating it. But I think that their test was a, had a little more. I don't think it was just a coincidence because look at these images. Okay. Um, now this is actually from a navy.mil website nrl.navy.mil and it's explaining what harp is okay this this paper was released in 1999 so they hadn't really been thinking about what all they were talking about but look at these images here notice it's still on the navy.mil website now this is this is an illustration of what the harp system looks like when it's in operation. Notice the spiraling right here. And here's actually another image that they have on the website on the website, still navy.mil and it's zooming in on the top. That's what it looks like when it's in operation. You can see the spiral effect very vividly. Now, I'm also going to um, add in this video some uh, Nisim Haramein, uh, a physicist. Um, he's, he's very intelligent, and he has some, some original ideas about, you know, grand unified field theory and all that. But he explains how every wave is actually a spiral. There's no such thing as just normal wave signals. And I'll include some of that video on this.